Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here doing a Vintage Masters. Hey, and look, right off the bat we get a, a Power 9, a Mox Pearl. That is awesome. I, I, I think they're worth a ton. Uh, we'll have to check the price on here, but awesome. My very first Vintage Masters pack, I open up a Mox Pearl. I think we're going to snack snap pick that i'm not going to look at the other cards in the in the set as mox pearl goes in any any deck you're going to be playing this any of the moxes they just ramp so well even if they added colorless mana uh you'd want them so definitely a great pickup definitely paid for everything here i i'll have to check the price on on goldfish to see what the mox pearls are going for right now and maybe i'll ship it off and do a couple more vintage drafts so feeling lucky already great great pick We'll see what's in this next pack. So I saw Dark Ritual. What else was... I'll have to check over that to see what other cards were even in the pack. Uh, very excited right now for the Mox Pearl. Alrighty, so we have a High Tide Spirit Mirror. At the beginning of the upkeep, if there are no reflection tokens on the battlefield, put a 2-2 white reflection. Destroy target reflection. Okay, so it just keeps coming back forever you get... A reflection token so it's a it's an enchantment as long as an enchantment stays in play you're gonna have a 2-2 two, two white uh, creature not not bad but not the greatest card ever either let's see here enters the battlefield but two one one goblins I do like going an aggro strategy uh, mesmeric fiend is always good it's kind of like the brain uh, maggot from standard right now high tide is very fun other than you really have to um, get a whole deck around it and Water for Bouncer is pretty good. You can always return creatures to their hand. Okay. Let's see here. Not really. Yeah, not really. I'm just going to go with this, this Beetleback Chief. I think it's the best card, especially the ramp strategy. We're going to try to go for a... Um, kind of a, an aggro strategy, a ramp aggro strategy. Uh, and maybe we'll, I, I like white and red. I think they're very underrated a lot of times in these, like in the modern masters drafts or the vintage or the masters edition drafts, excuse me, as people tend to go like crazy combo decks and you can just win with like aggressive decks. So uh, let's see. Aftershock's actually pretty good. I think Aftershock is a great removal card. Reanimates, of course, really, really cool. Um, let's see. The Floodplain is a fixer. A 2-1 flyer. F Frantic Search is actually very, very powerful. Um, as you can untap. It's basically a free spell. But I think I'm going to take the, the Aftershock here. I think it's the most powerful card in the format. Sorry, I'm going to have to read a bunch of these cards. Have no clue what a lot of them do, so excuse me for reading them. So here's another another goblin. It seems to be a ton of goblins in this. Here's another Beetleback Chief. And haste when it enters the battlefield to reveal the top four cards. Put a goblin card revealed this way and, da, 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 into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I don't think it's it's as good as, as say, the other Beetleback Chief. Gush is always cool. And another free card that you can play. Uh, Mana War is actually very powerful. You bounce a creature, return target creature to its owner's hand. You get a 2-2 out of it as well. Very good a very good tempo card. But I'm thinking... Oh, Cross and Tusker is very, very powerful in a reanimator strategy. Uh, you search the library for a basic land card, reveal the card, and put it in your hand. So you cycle it for three, and then you can get it back later. Addle is actually pretty cool for dis discard, but I think I'm going to go ahead and take the other Beetleback Chief. And we're going to definitely go for kind of a red strategy, red fast strategy. Now, we've got one of my favorite cards in the format, Reckless Charge. Absolutely love this card. Uh, plus Super Zero and Haste. And then Flashback. You get a lot of value out of it. But here's more goblins. Let's see, whenever Skill Jill Sergeant or another goblin dies, you may pay three if you do. For the top card of your library, if there's a goblin permanent, put it on the battlefield. Hey, I think we actually have enough to go kind of a goblin strategy here, especially if we get one back. Roar of the Worm's kind of good. Two six sixes you can get. Ernam de Jin's actually very powerful. Uh, four five for four. A Dothy Mercenary, Shadow 2 1. Uh, Temporal Fizzer. It was banned in Popper because it gets very overpowered. Our Familiar. Let's see, the elite. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go for this goblin strategy and see how well it goes. Uh, no red card in this one, so now we're going to be splashing a color. 
Let's see, a fast, a 2 2 zombie for one, and then deals damage to you if you have no zombies on the battlefield. Might end up going that route because it's very, very powerful. Nature's Lore for ramp. Let's see here. Phantom enters the battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters if the damage is dealt. You get rid of it. Power Sync actually is pretty good as a counter spell. But I think I'm gonna I'm I'm still gonna go for probably the sarcomancy. I'm gonna try to either go a black red aggro if I can't get another uh, color. I mean here's another here's another two two for one. So we'll have a very fast aggressive deck. And I mean there's some good cards in here, but nothing really sets out smokestack, being your upkeep, you may put a suit counter spoke to the beginning of each upkeep. That player sacrifice a permanent for each suit counter. Smokestack actually might work with the, the Beetleback Chief strategy here. And I might I, I kinda wanna go Carnophage. But this actually works with Sarcomancy. I think I'm gonna take the smokestack. So another Jill Sergeant, so we're getting a lot of goblins here. I think that we're going to go out on the goblin strategy. Definitely going to take it. Plus it's a 2-1 two, for 2. Hey, and a goblin goon. And I think I'll take it just because it's a goblin. But Dark Ritual, another ramp is just very, very good. And yeah, but I'll th I might just take the goblin goon because we are... We are going in this goblin strategy. It is a goblin. I mean, we have tons of goblins so far in this first pack. And I want to take this Dark Ritual, but I think Goblin Goon is, Goon is the right, right pick here. Uh, the Paralyze comes back. High Tide comes back. Rescind comes back. I think we'll take a Paralyze. It's good early. Return of Shadow Creature cards from your Grave Virtue Hand and draw a card. That seems very powerful. Yeah, definitely going to take the Urborg Uprising. We can actually get a bunch of stuff back from our graveyard and kind of go, that will be our card advantage through the black reanimation strategy uh, with a bunch of goblins. Now, Choking Tethers does seem very good if we do need to splash in a black uh, or blue. I think it is the most powerful card out of there. Again, I apologize for the, the terrible commentary um, as I'm reading all these cards and trying to formulate the best strategy I can think of. Um, of course, I would like to go to white, but all the whites so far seem very underwhelming. I I'm liking my goblin strategy. We have one, two, three. We have five goblins out of that first pack and two Beetleback Chiefs. And I just really think the Beetleback Chief is a very underrated card. I mean, you get two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens on the battlefield. So four mana, you get a bunch. And we get this uh, Reckless Charge back, which is definitely a, a blessing because we are going to go this aggro strategy. So maybe we do need to find some more sarc sarcomancies uh, and earlier like Carno carnophages as we can go a very aggressive a uh, black red strategy i'm going to take the nature's lore of the foil i think it's better than the killer whale and jungle worm a five five becomes blocked as negative one and one each turn for each blocking creature okay that's fine probably not gonna end up using it so let's 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 cross our fingers for another power nine no power nine but it's lightning dragon lightning dragon is very very good in our in our in our uh strategy we're going here we have a fact of fiction which is just a very powerful card and it's foiled uh pillaging horde is the battlefield sacrifice and just card a card random five uh five for for a four mana for a five five uh but it's definitely be this lightning dragon flying echo four four and then fire breathing i think it's very powerful and definitely a good rare we also have this night stalker uh opponent sacks a creature comes to play very good hopefully this wheels i doubt it will uh, and Solar Blast is actually very good too. Just four mana for a Lightning Bolt isn't bad in a limited format. So I'm going to take the Lightning Dragon here. And Curse Scroll. Actually, Curse Scroll is very, very good in our deck. Curse Scroll is an oldie, but a goodie. You name a card, reveal a card at random from your hand. If it's named card, Curse deals two damage to start creature player. Now, what's so good about this is you get rid of your entire hand, and except for one card, and then you can just start... Um, beating him down with curse scroll i do think it's better than like a goblin can patrol i highly 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 think this will wheel and maybe the carnophage will wheel as well and cobble, cobble ritual is pretty good too uh but we we're not going the ramp strategy with black another mesmeric fiend which actually works pretty well in our strategy because we get to get we get to get rid of one of their cards until they actually deal with mesmeric fiend 
De Death Reap Rituals, actually, I, I drafted this in a conspiracy draft before, and it was really, really good. But I think I'm going to just go with the Cursed Scroll and call it good. Eureka! Let's see. Starting with you, each player may put a permanent card from his or her hand onto the battlefield. Repeat this process until no other one puts a card on the battlefield. A foil mythic. I just might take it for the value here, but we get another Beetleback Chief. I think I'll take the Beetleback Chief. have no clue what like these foil mythics are actually going for. I'm sure they're going for... Since they, you can't redeem them, I'm not sure how much a non-redeemable set uh, foil mythics go for. So I would take it if it was like a redeemable set, because usually they're like 14 tickets. But anywho, I'm going to go ahead and take this Beetleback Chief. And we have another... Um, Reckless Charge, but we have the, the Skirk Prospector that can actually help us ramp. You may have Dax Duplicate into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. It's up against Haste and Dethrone. I don't think we're going to be going into blue. It is a... It is a um, oh, I thought it was a goblin because it's a goblin picture, but it is just a shapeshifter. So, Choking Sands, Destroy Turn on Swamp. It's a land. Was not base deals two damage. That's not bad. Brain Freeze, of course, is really cool in a Storm Strategy. And I, wow, this this is actually a really amazing card. As it's a limited format, they only have 40 cards. So, I'm, I'm wishing I would have gone into blue. We have some awesome blue cards. Like, Deep Analysis is awesome as well. Reckless Charge is good. Skirk Prospector. I think we will go Skirk Prospector. Or, I mean, Source of Plowshare is actually very good. Might end up just taking the... I'm going to take the Reckless Charge. I think that going an aggro deck is the, is the best way to go. Hate passing up that that um, the Swords of Plowshare. Uh, but we get a blessing here with a Goblin War Chief, which helps our Goblin strategy. And Kindle's pretty good if you can get enough of them. Giant Strength is actually pretty good. A two, plus 2 plus 2 for 2 mana. And But it's definitely going to be this Goblin War Chief as it goes along perfectly with our strategy. And we've got tons of Goblins. So it's definitely what we wanted. Another Scares... Um, Drill Sergeant, Animate Dead's nice, Reanimates, look at this blue, look at this blue storm, Obsessive Search um, with the, the that Brain Freeze, Obsessive Search, Compulsive Research type, a lot of Madness type cards here, I uh, definitely have to look into going a Madness strategy again, I'm going to take the, the Goblin, call it good, and another Goblin, I think we'll just take it, and definitely just go i mean we could actually just at this point do we even need to um go into black or another card i mean i i'm not 100 percent even into black yet afterlife charge future controller can be generated controllers man white has got some ma nasty control in this format uh, i'm going to take the hulking goblin just because it is a goblin there's another reckless charge but there's also this caldera lake that'll help us go into blue if we need to but look at blue another obsessive search whoever's going that brains freeze is definitely going to have a really really good uh Really, really good card. A uh, really, really good deck. But another reckless charge. So good. We have this amazing aggro deck. I definitely will take this pillaging horde. I think it's. I think it's pretty good actually. A five five for four mana. And. Yeah, definitely gonna take it. And Goblin Patrol or Carnal Fage, I mean, I think that at this point, Goblin Patrol might be the better card, as we have so many Goblins. I mean, I kind of want to take this Carnal Fage, but it is in our colors. I mean, we could go Mono Red. See, dis discarding a number of cards at random creatures. Control. Okay, Rites of Initiation actually goes very well in, in the deck, as we can just go all out on... Uh, with the, like, the Beetleback Chiefs and how fast we are. Putrid Imp's also good, but... We'll definitely just go this this rites of initiation and and might might actually end up playing it again. I, I'm really liking the our 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 deck so far. All right, so we got a noble templar scrivener. Scrivener is probably the the well we'll we'll, we'll hit out this exile. Who knows if we actually will go into white. Got a giant strength or another aftershock. I think aftershock is actually perfect for our strategy here, so we'll take it. So now we have two removal. Pretty sweet card. Just trigger artifact creature or land, and it deals three damage to you. That's that's really really good. Uh, we can we can just take this two one, or we can take a fixer. I'll just take the fixer and scourge familiar. Go ahead and take it. 
All right, one more power nine. Let's be greedy here. Let's get a Mox Ruby or a Black Lotus. Black Lotus is better, right? Uh, Keldon Necropolis deals two damage to target. Sacrifice a creature, kills Necropolis, deals two damage to target creature player. I'm hoping this will come back because it actually goes pretty good in our deck as we have plenty of things to actually sacrifice. Now... Tiana Nomad Captain is actually really good for our strategy. And if we can go somehow go into white, it might be worth it. I mean, we've got this Goblin Commando. Two damage start creature when it comes to play, but for five mana for a 2-2, two, two, I don't think it's the, the right uh, pick here. Got this sexy Brainstorm and a Counterspell. Man, blue is very powerful in this format. Wild Mongrel, of course, is a very good card. And it works very well with, like, Reckless Charge. But it... It's probably just going to be this the Skirk Prospector. I don't think I can justify taking a Skirk Prospector this high. I think I'm going to take this Nomad Captain because it it gives everything battle cry and in our deck to swarm them. I'm thinking it's the right. Well, and we got this Nice Gate Familiar that makes everything costless. I'm going to take the Nice Gate Familiar because I think I'm more into black. And maybe that was the wrong play because now. Well, still not the greatest cards. I, neither of these, none of these cards are really good um, in in our deck. Berserk, what is Berserk? Target is trample and gets plus zero X's its power, and they destroy. Yeah, Berserk is a very, very good card. Uh, I think it's his first printing on MTGO, so it actually might be worth something. I don't know how many vintage decks actually use Berserk. Uh, if not, I'll have to check it out. I wish I knew prices, but I think we'll just take this Goblin Goon. I think it's perfect again in our strategy. So Goblin Patrol again is good. Another Aftershock. And yeah, Aftershock's going to be the right play. Bashing Root Water Cut. Groot Wall, it's kind of kind of wish I would have taken the Wild Mongrel, and then we can you can go the whole Frog in the Blender deck from from clear back when uh, Basking Raw and Wild Mongrel and the Reckless Charge were legal. So I think I'll just take Aftershock though. And now we have a ton of a a ton of control in our deck, plus a lot of aggro. Goblin Matron, whenever enters the battlefield, oh yeah, that's perfect for our deck. Perfect, perfect, perfect to go find our Goblin War Chief. So we'll go ahead and take it. And there's an armadillo cloak in here as well, but we'll take the matron. And whew, we get another goblin war chief, which is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect for our deck. So we're looking very, very good. And I think we can just go into mono red at this point. Uh, Orcus lumberjack. It's not a goblin. It's an orc. Mana prism. Ramps. I don't think we need ramp at this point. Uh, Sky Shout, forest or grasslands. I don't think we, we really care about. We have a, a Shadow Guy, a Repeal. Again, nothing is very good in this in this deck. I think I'll just take this Foil Rare, or it's a Foil Uncommon, actually. Eh, we'll, we'll take a Fidian. I think it's actually better than any of the, the other cards. I mean, we could take a, take a Choking Sands. And, yeah, it's it's black. Eh, whatever I take here is not that big of a deal, because nothing helps us there. Spar Spray is pretty good if we, we could actually bring it in against a a uh, creature based deck that has a lot of one toughness and now looking at this there looked like there's a lot of white creatures or like this this skywing aven that have one toughness here another frantic search very good card frex and defiler actually it's not a bad card if we have to go into into black i mean it, black's actually looking pretty good at this point to splash into another choking sands another putrid imps a shadow dothy mercenary is probably a little bit better than a putrid imp And we'll take it. And we could get another Skirk Prospector, but I think the the I think Kel ne Necropolis will actually be playable, and it'll be a little bit better than the Skirk Prospector. Even though Skirk Prospector could help us ramp, but what are we really ramping into at this point? I think we just take the Necropolis. And again, nothing too juicy in here. Uh, we'll just take, we'll just take this obsessive surge. It 
Again, really liking this deck. I think we have plenty of, uh, of creatures. We'll take the Goblin Patrol. It's perfect for our deck. Or Thopter Squadron for three. Plus one, let's remove plus one. Yeah, I, I think the Thopter Squadron is okay in, in what we're trying to do. But Goblin Patrol is perfect for what... I mean, we I actually want a couple more Goblin Patrols. And just take the Familiar here. And I will take a Commando. We might end up actually playing it. And ugh, I don't care about either one of these. And I think we did pretty good, though. I really do. I think we can go Mono Red. We have plenty of cards to go. We got Aftershocks for Control. We have two Goblin War Trees. We have a Goblin Matron. We have Skirk Drill Sergeants, which are two ones. I think we're very, very aggressive. So Goblin Patrols are great. The Reckless Charges are awesome. I think Rites of Initiation does make the cut. So does Hulking Goblin. And the Drill Sergeants, the Matron, the War Chiefs, the Goons... All the Aftershocks, the Beetleback Chief, the Lightning Dragon, the Pillaging Horde, and we probably will play this Goblin uh, Commando just because it is a Goblin. And, well, probably not actually. It's going to be the Curse Scroll, the Smoke Stack. Well, maybe not Smoke Stack. I'm going to take out Smoke Stack. We're going to bring in the Mox Pearl and going to add some mountains here. Hey, we're going to use Cool Mountains. Um, as 15 lands and a Mox Pearl is perfect. We, we're curving out at 4. Nothing costs more than 4. And, yeah, I don't think we need this the Smokestack. Even though Smokestack is really good with the 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 Beetleback Chiefs. As we're going to sacrifice the 2 one, one Red Goblin Creature Tokens. And then your opponent is going to end up having to sacrifice. The cool thing about a Smokestack is you can sacrifice... You can actually sacrifice Smokestack, and they have to sacrifice something else. So, at the beginning of Repkeep, you may put a Soot counter on Smokestack. And so, can you stack this? I wonder how Smokestack works. Can you stack it to where you can stack the at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a print for each Soot counter? Like, I wonder which one... Because they, they both go on the stack, right? And then you can stack it afterwards, so... Your upkeep, you can say, sacrifice zero permits, then put a soot counter on it, and then um, it starts on their turn. So I'm thinking it might just be more powerful than I'm giving it credit for. Yeah, I think it is. Um... Yeah, so what can we what can we take out here? What's the weakest link in the deck? Maybe this hulking goblin for a smokestack. So, again, I don't know. It's I, I want to try the Smokestack because I, I do think it is very, very good. I have so many things that are just easy to kill that we don't need. And it might just be this Rites... No, Rites of Initiation to me just seems like it's... Huh. I'm just going to play a 41 card deck here and see what our weakest card is. And, and we'll go from there. And I'm going to check the prices of Mox Pearl and a few other cards. And and then we'll we'll play round one here. So let me know what you would have done differently. I'm thinking the blue was wide open. That brain that brain freeze just seemed too juicy. Uh, but if that was in pack one, I, I definitely would have taken it a lot higher up. But pack two, when I was already kind of committed to this goblin strategy, I, I don't think it was the right play. Anyway, this has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.